established to everybody here in Minnesota. I'm Brother Dan. Reading for us today will be Brother Chris. You know, it's always a blessing again to uh, come down and visit. Can y'all hear me? Come down and visit. And, uh, you know, fellowship with the brothers and sisters down here. Here at the Israel of God, we like to teach every word of God by subject and title. We like to let the Bible speak. We like to let make sure that everybody here has an understanding of what the word of God is trying to say. That being said, you know, when you look in the news, we tend to see a lot of things, a lot of people now are putting, you know, what people are doing in a secret is being brought to light. You know, uh, what people used to get away with that we wasn't aware of is now being exposed. And things like that is happening because the Lord is trying to send a message. We want everybody to get themselves in order, clean themselves up, start walking in straight and narrow. But this thing is almost over with. I don't know if you're looking for 20 more, 30 years for the Lord to come back, but it's not the case. I mean, it's up on us, and it's like on our heels. Only how you won't be able to see the Lord come back if you die, or get killed. That's it, right? If you die, get killed. <laughs> that being said, we're going to deal with a lesson called open rebuke is better than secret love. Open rebuke is better than secret love. And I like to reiterate, when you turn on the news, you know, especially in our political realm, when you're running for office for some type of position, I like to bring up things that the public don't know quite what you've been involved in, that's wrong. <laughs> and, and that's what we're about. When you look on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, people put you on blast. People will put your business out there in the street, and they don't care now because they have a platform to speak. They have, a, they have people that's waiting to hear and to look on and see what you've done. And people that's looking on seeing people news or what we like to say dirty laundry being exposed, that's a message to us. Let's get our thing in order. You know, you got to be mindful of what you do. Because it can come back at a time you wasn't expecting it can make you look real bad and shameful. And we're going to take a look at all these things. We're going to take a look at People doing things in the dark and thought that the Lord wasn't watching. You know, how to handle people. And sometimes the Lord, his correction may seem grievous and, and ill-hearted, but it's for your love and, your for, and for your benefit. Because there's benefits in correcting yourself. Even myself. We always got to stand corrected. We're never too high to where we can't humble ourselves and get it, do it better than what we did yesterday. Even in our best state, we ain't nothing but filthy rags. Book say. At our best state, we ain't nothing but filthy rags. So don't never think you up here and above somebody. You see it happening every day. Everybody that's all in the lime life. That's even more a, 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 a drive to do right. Because people are in your business. You know? And just because you're not in the lime life, People still in your business, <laughs> you know. So we gonna run on. We gonna we gonna we gonna take a look at some things. I, I like this lesson. I think y'all may like it too. We like to get excited, and let me tell you something, people. We like to have fun when we deal with the Word of God, you know. Because hey, if you're gonna deal with the Word of God, have fun with it. But we are serious at the same time, you know. So let's get right back down to the story. Let's, let's get into this thing, man. Let's go to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter. 
Because open rebuke is always better than secret love. You know, that secret love, we're going to take a look at that thing. You don't want that secret love. <laughs> that love you thought you had, you, you just, you love. And you know what? We're going to explain why people like secret love. I guess my, that's my boo thing. That's my side piece. <laughs> yeah, we're going to look at it all today. I'm telling y'all, be careful. 2 Timothy, 4th chapter. 2 Timothy, 4th chapter. We're going to pick it up at verse 2. When you get that, Brother Chris, go ahead and read. Preach the word. Mm -hmm. Be instant, in season, out of season. Yes, sir. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Now, this word of God must be preached. It got to be preached in a time in season and out of season. That means all the time. Spring, summer, winter, fall, right? That's the seasons that they say, right? That's right. In inconvenient times and non-inconvenient times. When it's necessary, when it's sometimes, hey, when you think it's not necessary. You know, the Lord say, reprove. When you're reproving somebody, it don't have to be harsh. It don't have to be abrasive, aggressive. You know, Lord say a man that don't offend in word is like a perfect man. So think on these things when you're trying to tell somebody or correct somebody. It don't always have to be when you put somebody in, in, in the con you're talking to people in a condescending way. Or you're fronting on them. It don't have to be like that. You know, rebuke. Yeah, we got to rebuke. Some people do it to where you have to put a little bit of inferences on it. You have to be a little bit more stern and firm. And exhort with all long suffering. You got to suffer with the word of God. And you got to suffer with doctrine, not what we believe, but what's written. You can't get caught up in emotions. Tell the people what's written. Don't give them your spin. Okay. So you got to think about that when we're telling people, when we want people to receive things. Don't always just throw things up in people's face. It's not cool going to see it all, right? right? Let's keep it moving. Let's go to Hosea. Hosea 10. I just had to read that because a lot of people don't understand what this Bible is for. It's for to correct you. It's for to reprove you. It's for to keep you straight. Hosea 10. You know? And we, we got to keep this in mind. Something got to keep you intact. When you get up in the morning, you got to keep yourselves intact. You got to go through hygiene checks. Do the things that you need to do for your hygiene. Wash up, brush your teeth, comb your hair, goggle, bro, you know, change your underclothes, iron, feed yourself. You got to keep your own self in check. Physically and mentally. Hosea 10, brother. Pick it up at verse 12. Hosea 10 and verse 12 because, hey, the Lord say, preach the word, right? We heard about reproving, rebuking, and exhort with all low and suffering and doctrine. We're going to add to that. Hosea 10, pick it up at verse 12. When you get there, Brother Chris, go ahead and read. Sow to yourselves in righteousness. Yes, sir. Reap in mercy. Sow in righteousness, and then you'll reap in mercy. When you tend to fall, you want somebody to be merciful to you. Go ahead. Break up your fallow ground. Yes, sir. For it is time to seek the Lord. You heard what this said? Break up your fallow ground. I'm giving you a chance to get yourself together. Break up the foolishness. It's time to seek God. It's time, people. I don't know if y'all been watching, but it's a lot of nonsense going on out here. You hear me? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Till he come and rain righteousness upon you. Yes, sir. 13. Go ahead. You have plowed wickedness. You plowed wickedness. Everybody did some wrong. Go ahead. You have reaped iniquity. And we seen when we be doing some foolishness, we reap sin. We seen it. We know we do stuff that everybody is not privy to. And we see a wrath come back. You know. Go ahead and read. You have eaten the fruit of lies. Yeah, we ate lies. We even told lies. Don't say you didn't. Don't, 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 don't do that to me. You lie. <laughs> Go ahead. 
Because thou didst trust in thy way. Because you trust in what you thought was right. We all have done it. Go ahead. In the multitude of, of thy mighty men. In the multitude of your mighty men. So the Lord say, hey, man, break up this fallow ground. It's time to seek God. See? You got people out here in these churches where these priests are raping folks, molesting people, and they still pack. What's that telling you? They should be running up out of there. Yes, sir. Two police officers are catching these uh, homosexual priests uh, 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 doing their thing in the car in the open. Without, it wasn't like it was tinted windows in the daytime where the police had to knock on the door for them to stop. But you're going to be right in that church. See? This is what we up against. This is the other day. Google it. This is the other day. I can go on and on and on and on. In one week, we get so much craziness on the news. Y'all know that. In one week. I'm talking about not a literal seven days. I'm talking about a work week, five days. I ain't going to give you seven. I try to give you a break. Take two <laughs> days off. Man, you be like, goodness. That's why everybody be like, happy Sabbath. <laughs> I made it. Yes, sir. Am I lying? You always hear happy, happy Sabbath. Because you know what? That's a relief. Because you just made it through a war zone. No doubt. I'm telling you, we're going to get into some stuff today. But what's the reason for why the Lord told us to break up our fallow ground and seek God? What's the reason for it? Chris, Titus. Let's go to Titus. Let's, let's find out the reason for certain things. See, one thing I about, we like to do is we, let, we like to let the Bible speak, and we also like to let you understand what you're reading in its entirety. My thing is this. If you got a question about a lesson that you heard on the Sabbath day, that means I wasn't clear enough to you. You should ask me something that's not pertaining to the lesson. But if you got a problem with the lesson, I wasn't clear enough. Titus 2. Titus 2. What's the reason why you want me to break up my fallow ground? Why you want me to seek God? Why I got to reprove, rebuke, and exhort with long suffering and doctrine? Why, God? I'm going to show you. Titus 2. Pick it up at verse 11. When you get that, Brother Chris, go ahead and read. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all men. See, the grace of God is, salvation is coming, people. The grace of God brings salvation. Okay, 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 I got you that. I got that. Go ahead. Well, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust. And this is the reason. See, it's teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust. Yes, we got ungodliness, and yes, it's a lot of things out here in the world we lust for. Trust me. You know? We like to get into some lustful stuff, and it don't necessarily have to be flesh. Go ahead. We should live soberly. Soberly, hey. Righteously, hey. And godly, hey. In this present world. You got to put the, put the alcohol down some. You know, like the song say, that good cushion alcohol, you got to put it down. You know, I'm just saying, you got to be soberly, right? You should live soberly, righteously, godly, in what? In this present world. In this present world. That means right, right now, what's going on today. If you don't be sober, somebody can come up behind you because you're drunk, rob you, take your salvation because you're not being sober. When you're not being righteously, you reap wickedness. Now you got drama in your house. You shouldn't have drama in your house. You shouldn't have nothing you can't put out. If you got a fire in the house, you're supposed to have an extinguisher. It's supposed to get put out. It shouldn't spread and take over the whole house. You follow me? Not if you're a servant of God. That means you want some foolishness. Because in this present world, we're in this present world, right? And we in another world? 
No, sir. Okay, we're in the present world. That means right now, present. I'm pre Everybody that's present. I'm taking a head count. Present, that's when you call your name when you're in class, right? That's right. Go ahead. Looking for that blessed hope. Looking for what? That blessed hope. Yes, sir. That's what we're looking for, that blessed hope. That's why we're here. I want to get paid. I got to deal with all this. Read. Go ahead. And, and that glorious appearing of the great God and our, salve, and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Hey, we, hey, that's what we're looking for. This is the reason why we're here. This is the reason. See, we can show you in a lot of different ways. One thing I like about the Word of God is it's something you can always see more in one scripture. I'm going to show you. And I'm going to bring it and show you that ain't nothing new. People doing the same stuff. Anything that the Lord say don't do, people doing. Just because you're not doing doesn't mean it's not being done. We were talking about that up here. Trust me. It's getting done. Like we like to say, they getting it in. We getting turned up. You know what I mean? Yeah, bro. Keep going, brother. So we see the reasons why we doing the thing. Because we, we looking for that, that, that blessed hope. Looking for the salvation of God to come. So we, we, we do the things that the Lord say don't do. Denying ungodliness. We got to deny it. You know that? We got to say, no, nah, I ain't going to do that. We got to deny it when it be appear before us. Because right. it's going to appear. Somebody going to want you to come on and do something. Trust me. Sisters, and I ain't real on y'all. You know, it's a lot of sisters that single nowadays. You know, they're tempting to, to, to be the side one. I'm just saying. I'm speaking reality. And brothers, you know, they make an opportunity. You know, you got one, you're doing good, you got a little job, something going for yourself, you, you a target. We can, we, we can, we can work, we can work out a plan. Don't deny, don't, don't accept it, deny it, you know. And so that's what we got to hey, hey, tell you the things you got to just get away from, people. See, I'm going to tell you something. I like to be straightforward. I like to show you that the word of God is still on point today. See? Yeah. And one thing I like about this word of God, we got different types of teachers. So we bring it on all scales, on all realms. Keep it moving, man. Psalms, Psalms 107. You know, sometimes people go through a lot of things in their life because of what they have done. You know, and I and I can contest it because I didn't did some nonsense, and I don't even know why I did it. Right. Psalms 107, and I gotta, and I'm taking a hit. I gotta take what the young people call that L. I got to take that loss. You know? You ain't had to take the loss. All you had to do was do right. You don't even know why you got into it. But the pleasures of sin came up on you. You know? But the books say the pleasures of sin. That's what Moses had to deny. He rather to suffer with the children of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Sin is pleasurable. That's why people can't shake it. Psalm 107. Pick it up at verse 17. 107 and 17. Because, hey, people be going through stuff, but sometimes we don't have to go through things. And this, 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 this is for everybody right here. You got to watch it. You can bring stuff into your, your life that you didn't have to have. 107 and 17, go ahead and read. Fools because of their transgression. Fools, yeah, sometimes we have been a fool or act a fool. You heard that statement, why are you acting a fool? I don't know. Fools because of what? Their transgression. Go ahead. And because of their iniquities are afflicted. Now, you don't want to get afflicted first, do a fool check. 
<laughs> now, am I getting afflicted because I'm being a fool? Now, I ain't been a fool. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Do the fool check. Are you playing the fool? See, this is the word of God. It's the scripture. What part of the scripture are you playing? You playing a fool today? Go ahead and read. 18. Their soul abhorreth all manner of meat. You know, hey, you don't want it because the word is meat. Doing right when somebody giving you some meat. Meat ain't always necessarily a steak. Right. You follow me? Piece of chicken. Tenderloin or something. Now, we ain't talking about pork. You, you fool with that type of meat. Ain't nothing I could do for you. <laughs> you know, I, I ain't even come to sit down at the table. I'm standing up because I'm scared the table might blow up or something. I don't know. I'm stepping back. But they abhor all, all manner of meat, all type of reasons to get themselves right. Go ahead. And they draw near unto the gates of death. And they love playing near the gates of death. You know, jumping back and forth. You know what I'm saying? Loving it. Why are you playing near the streets? Somebody push you, you're going to get, that's it. They like to play near the gates of death. Get out of trouble, back into it. Get out of trouble, doing the same stuff. You love playing in them gates. Then you get tired, you just got electrocuted. <laughs> it says, warning, high voltage near the gates. But you keep playing it. <laughs> Go ahead. 19. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble. And we do. Oh, my God, oh, Lord, in our trouble. Go ahead. And he saved them out of their distress. The Lord saved them. He saved you. Read. He sent his word, and he healed them. And see, that's what heals you, his word. Go ahead. And delivered them from their destruction. And he delivered you from being destroyed, from your destruction. To snatch yourself back, people. Uh, Satan trying to take people clean out. Something messing with you? Get out of your phone. Read the app. Stay away from it. Don't accept the call. Don't drive by that way. Don't hang out with that person. Don't even give no opportunity to get you into something you can't shake. Right. Don't play with yourself. Don't play near the gates of death. Stay away. Finish it to 21. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness. Yes, sir. And for his wonderful works to the children of men. Hey, the Lord got a lot of wonderful works. Praise the Lord for that. Praise the Lord you woke up. Give thanks. Praise the Lord you're here. Give thanks. Praise the Lord your kids are still here. Give thanks. A lot of people, kids checking out. A lot of parents checking out. Give thanks. You know? That's why we can't all, we always got to, Go back. I'm going to tell you why. Proverbs. Proverbs 9. See? Love that. See, doing wrong is like sugar. It's like addictive. You know? It's like sugar. Got to taste that sweet. I need to. Sometimes we, we, we eat something sweet. We don't even know the reason why. I just, I just had a taste for something sweet. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm about to show you about that sweetness. Proverbs 9, pick it up at verse 7, Proverbs 9 and 7. And the reason why I tell you what I told you earlier, how to handle people, because you got to be mindful how you talk to people and how you reprove people. And some people ain't worth the reproof. Let them, let them ride. Let them go. Hey, you on your own on this. I'm going to keep quiet. But don't, don't wish no ill on them. 
Don't do that. And even on your enemies. And even on people you think deserve it. The Lord said he don't take no pleasure that the wicked shall die. Right. You're supposed to be like-minded. Proverbs 9 and 7, go ahead and read. He that reproves the scorner gather to himself shame. Because he's a scorner when you try to reprove him. And they're going to try to turn what you said, turn it on you, turn it around, and make you look shameful. Go ahead. And he that rebuketh the wicked man gather himself a blot. And you get yourself a blot. Now they say something bad about you. No. You think you all that, huh? Even though now you changed and all that. I remember when you blase, skippy, woo, 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 this, that, and the other. Now you trying to act like you all holy. You know, they, they come at you like that. I'm telling you. Some people, you got to know who to reprove and who to just say, look, man, whatever. That dude ain't listening. She ain't listening. Or you just say, just be careful. That's it. Don't add that little mo. Because you go get yourself a block. Go ahead. Reprove not a scorner, lest he hate thee. Because they're going to hate on you. Go ahead. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love thee. People that's wise, that can receive correction, that's who you tell. Read. Nine. Give instruction to, the, to a wise man. And what's going to happen? And he will be yet wiser. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Teach a just man. And what happens? And he will increase in learning. That's who you teach. That's who you tell. That's why you tell this word to. Sometimes, let me tell you something. We out here bringing this word. When I'm bringing this word or whoever, sometimes it ain't for you. It's for the people that's around listening. That's right. I just play it off. You just a decoy. You the decoy, but everybody else, I'm using you as the Prototype. <laughs> See, if it wasn't for you, it was for everybody that was listening. I know when they listening because they just stop, and, you know, and act like they doing something, you know. You know, you know when they trying to tune in, that yeah. ear trying to lock in. You know, I got him, got him, yep. <laughs> got him. Is that the end of nine? Yeah, that's good. Skip down to 17 and continue. Go ahead. Stolen waters are sweet. What kind of waters? Stolen waters. Are what? Sweet. See, people like stuff that's stole. Because <laughs> it was sweet. They took it and you ain't even know it. See? Still it ain't stopped. Did it. Somebody just got ripped off the other day, just this second. Stolen waters are sweet because they take it and they take it from up under you so sweet. You ain't even know it. It was talking right beside you. Anyway, I was going in your pocket easy and took out that little nice little whatever. See? They got a lot of ways. They got hackers hacking into people's accounts and stuff, stealing identities and taking your money. It's sweet. Stolen waters are sweet. Go ahead. And bread eaten in secret is pleasant. See, bread eaten in what? In secret. That's what people like to do. They like to eat their bread in places you're not familiar with. You didn't have no knowledge of it in secret. See, these are the acts we do things in secret. See, like you hear about people say, you know, see, you ain't a part of this circle. You ain't about that life. What life is that? I'm in life. What, what don't I know apart? That? <laughs> That's that secret acts that they doing. You know? You're right. I don't want to be about that life. Why? Go ahead and read. 18. But he knoweth not that the dead are there. The dead folks are there. They hanging around graveyards. The walking dead. Or somebody that's about to become dead. The dead are there. People that like stolen water, and doing things in secret. Eating your, why are you eating your bread in secret? I don't want none anyway. They ain't want, you know, you ain't want nobody to ask you for none. And the Lord say, share. 
You better watch out for people that do things in secret. And like to, like to buy stolen stuff. You know, you know, knockoffs. You know they got stolen. You know they stole it. But you think you want to get that little quick, that quick little bargain. No, you're supposed to pay the full price. Somebody stole that. That's right, bro. CDs, DVDs. Loose squares. No, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, man. <laughs> you know, that's piracy, you know what I mean? You go home by the movie. <laughs> now you mad when you go home, you get a, a bogus movie or something. Then you, went, you went to Walmart. They got a little bin with all them little movies. You could get $3 or something. Come on, now, man. I know it's a hustle. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it's to death. You know what I mean? I'm just saying, people. I'm talking about that, that real stuff you know people go and steal. You know. They got boxes and boxes of uh, flat screens still in the box. Somebody hit somebody for it. They're lit. <laughs> you think you're getting hit. Now, and, then, and, and I'm going to tell you something. And they always come to the barber shops and the beauty salons. <laughs> they come in and do a... They lay everything out for everybody while you in the chair getting cut up or whatever. Man, I got this. I, I mean, they have people that 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 be uh, uh, showcasing the product. What type of food is this? Is this? Why they just standing there and seeing what you gonna buy? And you like, man, where you get this from? How you get this? This ain't even came out yet. <laughs> they didn't hit somebody inventory. You get you like it's sweet. You think you got you the first person to get it. You gotta watch that stuff, people. You gotta watch what you're doing. Just go on pay for right. Because you get you get your house full of all stolen stuff, then your house get hit. Because you shouldn't have had all that stolen product. So. See? I'm just trying to tell you how it is. You finish that? And the 18. You say that her guests are in the depths of hell. Finish that verse. And that her guests are in the depths of hell. People, she got guests. That means she got people coming to her set. A party. After party. They getting turned up over here. That's what the young people like to say. But her guests are in the depths of what? Hell. Hell. All type of turmoil and stuff these people going through. And they going to die. You want to be that guest? You want to get on the guest list of her? Don't fool with that stolen water and that bread eating in secret. Stolen waters are sweet. Is that right, sweetie? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Second Samuels. Let's give an example of this, people. Second Samuel, let's, let's show you about that stolen waters and that eating bread in secrecy. We're going to bring life. We're going to break this story down. I know y'all heard this story a lot. but We're going to show you from a different angle. Second Samuel, I like bringing out stories. Because the Lord always got another angle he got it from. Second Samuel 11. Hey, David. Now, this is a person in a high position, right? So this don't exempt us from falling off. But we're going to break this story down, and we're going to show you something that you didn't consider that goes on in our mind today. 2 Samuel 11. Pick it up at verse 11. I mean, yeah. No, no, I'm sorry. 2 Samuel 11 and verse 1. My fault. 2 Samuel 11 and verse 1. When you get there, Brother Chris, go ahead and read. And it came to pass after the year was expired at the time when kings go forth to battle, uh -huh. that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel. Yep, now, David sent out all his servants. Joab, that was his heavy hitters. All his mighty men, go ahead and read, and what they do. And all Israel. And they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rabbi, but David tarried still at Jerusalem. Now, David, he in the time where he just sent the army out. I ain't even got to go this time. Y'all going to take care of the business. You know, Israel taking care of the business. They destroying people, taking more lands, and 
putting people in, uh, you know, making people tributaries. You know, you got to pay us now. You know, we were doing it in righteousness. Italian folks doing it. Nah, let me, you see why y'all got to pay unions and all that. Y'all got to script. You know, you know, why, why I got to pay you? You got to pay me. This is my part of the, the city. Come on up off of that. <laughs> ain't nothing. That, it ain't nothing. I can read all about it. it. Ain't nothing new. Go ahead and read. And it came to pass in an evening, in an evening tide. Always in the evening. There it go. Go ahead. That David arose off his bed. Go ahead. And walked upon the roof of the king's house. Yes, sir. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. Now, she wasn't no ordinary woman. She was bad. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. She was, it said she was, it put very on beautiful. That means she was cold. This was a dime piece. Probably bet more than she went to the seat of the dime. Now, I'm not saying, don't get mad at this. That's, I didn't write that. <laughs> I'm just stressing it. She was cold to look at. That means once you, that means, see, you got certain beauty that's nice looking, but you got that beauty, you just got to stare for a minute like, goodness. Y'all created that. See, you got to watch. There you go. That was the first red light, red flag. It took you. Go ahead and read. Three. And David sent and inquired after the woman. Now you, of course, that's what we do. We see a bad sister come in and we see him. We go, we gonna go check in on you. Oh Lord, where she come from? How did I miss her? <laughs> Ain't that what we do? That's what sisters do too. Go ahead and read. And one said, is not this Bathsheba? Now I'm gonna show you. He said, now, somebody had already scoped her before David. He said, hold on, you talking about, she, she, she nice and, and beautiful. And, and, she got, and, and, you know, they, she probably, David probably describing her, so I ain't going to get off into that. He probably was showing, you know, her, she was shaped and all that. Short hair, this, that, and the other. Oh, man, oh, I seen her. Yes, sir, I seen her. <laughs> yeah, that's who? Go ahead and read. The daughter of Eliam. That's the daughter of Eliam. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. What else about her? The wife of Uriah the Hittite. Man, I already peeped her. That's Uriah's wife. For real? Uriah. Uriah the what? Hittite. Hittite. He wasn't an Israelite. Now, think how we about to go. This red flag too. Hold on. Hittite. What this Hittite doing with this cold sister? That's how we think. Why? Why she can't endure some beauty? Uriah, if you read about Uriah in the Bible, Uriah was a Hittite, which was one of the children of Ham, but he was one of the heavy hitters of David's army. Yes, he was. He was working for the Lord. Why he can't get these? He ain't do nothing wrong. But see, we think, nah, uh -uh, he can't have his cold sister. No. Mm -mm, this mine. Go and what did what David do? Boy. And David sent messengers and took her. And took her. Now why you take her? See, stolen waters. And she looked as sweet. See? He, he took her, right? When you, go, when, when you take something, you didn't ask for it, did you? You didn't get it by permission, did you? And what you're taking got to be sweet. That's why you took it. Because it captivated you. Read. And she came in unto him, and he lay with her. Uh-oh. Did the do. For she was. Go ahead. For she was purified from her uncleanness. Mm. And she, she probably wanted, she probably didn't want to, I don't know, she probably didn't want to do this. She probably, what the, what the king calling me for? You know? I don't know what the conversation was. You know? She thinking, you know, because David was a handsome brother. He was a light-skinned brother. You know, your light-skinned brother better watch out. Y'all always doing stuff. <laughs> I, I'm just saying, hey, man, don't look at me, man. I'm just, I'm just. Books say David was ruddy. See, we get captivated over looks. 
and we get overwhelmed in our emotions. Now, I'm not saying she was wrong. She was just trying to do what, she, what the king said. She couldn't, she couldn't resist the king. She probably could. I don't know. I don't know what the conversation was like. But the book don't elaborate. Go ahead and read. And the four. And she returned unto her house. Go ahead. Five. And the woman conceived and sent and told David and said, I am with child. Uh-oh, he didn't know that was going to happen. David was going unprotected, without protection. See? That would break this story down so you could understand it today. They had methods on not to get pregnant, right? Ain't nothing new. He went what? Now, let me not go there. Go ahead and read. I wasn't going to say that. But boy, give me a call. Go ahead and read. Six. And David sent Joab saying, send me Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent Uriah to David. And now you trying to, you trying to fix it. They go to fixing. See? You trying to fix it. Go ahead and read. Seven. And when Uriah was come unto him, David demanded of him how Joab did and how the people did and how the war prospered. Now he tripping. What you, what you sending for me? Now he got to play it off and come up with some conversation. Why you didn't, if you was going to try to fix it, why you didn't ask, uh, 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 what, what, what was her name? Bathsheba? Was that her name? Bathsheba. Why you didn't ask her when was the last time you lay with your husband? I just want to know. He, you know, he probably was at war, but he probably laid with him last week or something. It, you know, the time period when you get pregnant. That's what I'd have been looking at. If I'm going to do some folly, you know, I'm trying to cover it up. I'm just saying. But the Lord in there, you can't cover it up good. You can't fix it quick enough. Go ahead and read. Eight. And David said to Uriah, go down to thy house and watch thy feet. And Uriah departed out of the king's house. Go ahead. And there followed him a mess of And he tried to give him a little something. Go on, take a little, little, little hamburger meat and steaks. Top of the line, USDA, grade A. Go ahead. Nine. But Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of his lord and went not down to and his when house. when you try to fix it, your plan don't never go right. When you, you can't fix wrong once you did it, it ain't going right. Go ahead. And when they had told David, saying, Uriah went not down unto his house. David said unto Uriah, Camest thou not from thy journey? Why then didst thou not go down unto thine house? Go ahead. And Uriah said unto David, The ark and Israel and Judah abide in tents, and my lord Joab and the, and the servants of my lord are encamped in the open fields. Shall I then go into mine house to eat and to drink and to lie with my wife? Is See, that the lie with my wife, that should let you know, uh-oh, his, his heart should have drunk. And that let you know that you ain't fixing this. You ain't fixing this. See, and when you're doing wrong and you're talking to people that you didn't did wrong against, they talking nothing but godly words. Now you spook because you know you can't fix this. He wasn't speaking nothing but righteous words. Man, I can't shake this dude to do what I'm trying to get done. Go ahead and read. Because he knew. His name, you think I'm going to go down there and get, a, you know, get some of that Hennessy and go and, 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 and dip with my wife? Ain't happening. I want to go with my boys. We, 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 we kicking butt out in the field. Somebody just killed my guy. I ain't thinking about that. I want to get back at these guys. See? That's how his mind was because they was at war. See? Go ahead and read. As thou livest. And as thy soul liveth, I will not do this I thing. I ain't doing that. Uh-oh. Go ahead. And David said to Uriah, Tarry here today also and tomorrow. I will let thee depart. So Uriah abode in Jerusalem that day and the morrow. Go ahead. 13. And when David had called him, he did eat and drink before him, and he made him drunk. And at even he went, down, he went out to lie on his bed with the servants of his lord but went not down to his house. He didn't go down to his house because, you know, sometimes the books say when you drink, you forget the law, right? No, no, no. He ain't forgetting nothing. He's, he's still tearing around with a king and the guardsman hat. You drunk, man? Why you ain't go home yet? He still ain't. 
because his mind wasn't on that. Go ahead. And he wrote, 14, I'm sorry, 14. And it came to pass in the morning that David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. Go ahead. Now, now David trying to incorporate another plan. The drunk part didn't get uh, ready. Send him home with a, a couple of steaks and all that, you know, and some lamb meat. Didn't work. You know, now, okay, I got, I got to, I just got to, I got to be a little bit more aggressive. I'm sorry, but I got to do this. You got to do this now. You took my wife. Now you got to do this to me. Now you're going to write a letter and give it to Joab. Now you didn't got somebody else into this sin. See, this is what we do when we own some nonsense. We involve other folks into this sin. Go ahead. 15. And he wrote in the letter saying, Set ye Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle and retire ye from him that he may be smitten and die. Now Uriah was a good, strong a, a, a soldier, but if everybody retired from him, you can't beat everybody from all sides coming at you. Uriah was one of the heavy hitters. Go read about him. But if everybody retired and retreat from you and you got a multitude of soldiers in front of you, it's on the soul. It's just going to, somebody going to hit you while you're swinging this way. Somebody going to stab you from the back. Can't get him, huh, everybody. I don't care how good you are. You know, if you ain't got that Samson spirit on you, you're through. So he says, set him at the hardest battle and retire. Now, Joab just read this letter. Man, I got to kill this dude. I know Joab saying, what in the world did you do when you went back to, the, to, to David and them? Okay. You don't know how his mind was thinking. You know, Joab was a man. He was a killer. He was a straight killer. He probably like, man, I'm, we killing your people anyway, man. Go on, set him over there to the northeast side where they shooting off the wall. You know what I mean? And, Tell them, tell your boys, as soon as y'all get over to the wall, y'all run back while they shooting at y'all. So, you know, so he ain't got nobody to help. I want you to do it. I don't know. I'm just telling you. Okay, skip down. Let's get to the end of this. Skip down to 26. Go ahead and read. And when the wife of Uriah heard that Uriah, her husband, was dead, she mourned for her husband. Mourned for her husband because she didn't want none of this. She had nothing to do with this. It ain't because of... What? I didn't do nothing. It ain't my fault I'm beautiful. You know, it's just like a, a, a nice looking woman coming to the party. and Everybody hating on her because they man looking at her. It ain't her fault she beautiful. Turns to God, we got to know how to, hey, we got to watch our eyes. Hey, you can't fault people because they beautiful. Or if they ugly. Go ahead and read. And when the morning was past, David sent and fetched her to his house. And she became his wife and bare him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. Now nobody, the reason why people probably didn't think nothing of it is because her husband died in the war. All they knew was her husband's in the war. He died. So she free for somebody to take her. See? That's how the people looking at it. They didn't know the secret part. How this played out. I did. David about to weep something for that. He's about to reap something. Second 12, go to second, second Samuel 12, go right on to the 12th chapter, pick it up at verse 7. Let's get straight to the point. Now, you already know Nathan about to come in and tell David what's up. He about to reprove and rebuke him, right? So he give him a scenario. David ain't like the scenario because he gave him a scenario about this man. He you know, another, a, a man from a, a, a far distance came to sojourn with him. He didn't dress. Now, this, this man, his, his, his company that came to stay at his house, he ain't want to dress uh, uh, his lambs or take from his lambs and all of the stuff that he had to dress for his company. He going to take somebody else that didn't have as much as he had and dress what they had to give to his company. And David got mad at that scenario. And Nathan said what? Pick it up at verse Pick it up at verse 7. Go ahead and read. And Nathan said to David, thou the man. You the man I'm talking about in this story. You can go read the story on your own. You the man, David. You the man. We are the men and women who do wrong and we got to deal with it. Read. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, 
I anointed thee king over Israel. I made you a teacher. I made you an elder. I made you a servant of God. I cleaned you up. I brought you this word. I showed you the uncut word to where you were not being deceived. See, this is how the Lord, the Lord always throw in what he did for you first to let you know you ain't had no reason to do that to me. Because you don't do it to man, you're doing it to God. Right. So the Lord always throw what he did for you in there first. And that's what people do. When you doing wrong to somebody, they say, hold on, I let you stay at my house. I gave you this, I gave you that, I gave you this, 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 this. And you're going to treat me like that? Ain't that what we do? That's what we do, right? We got to throw out the good that we did for you because you're rendering us evil for our good. Y'all better pay attention on how we operate. We do the same stuff. When somebody doing wrong by us, we always recall what we done did good for them. So the Lord is recalling that what he did good. Go ahead and read. And the seven. And I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. Yeah, I did. Read. And I gave thee thy master's house yep. and thy master's wives into thy bosom. I gave your master's bosom. house, your master's, your master's what? Wives into thy bosom. Go ahead. And gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. I gave you both the house of Israel and Judah. I gave you the whole nation. Read. And if that had been too little, I would have moreover have given unto thee such and such things. He didn't say I would have given you Bathsheba. But I would have given you something that would have sustained you so you wouldn't have been tripping like this. Read. Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? Go ahead. Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword. You killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword. Why you do that? Read. And hast taken his wife to be thy wife. And you took his wife to be your wife. Uh-huh. Read. And has slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. And you got somebody else to kill him. This is what the Lord is telling David. The Lord start with the heads so he can let you know that if I'm getting the heads, and you know if you to tell, I'm getting you. Don't nobody get missed. I'm bleeding while I'm telling y'all this. Yeah, bro. He was getting ahead. Where we at? Ten. We're going to wait till the music stop a little bit. No, I'm just messing. Go ahead and read. I thought I'd say something since I heard it. Go ahead and read. Now, I'm about to let me cut mine out right now. I ain't about to get caught. Make sure yours is off too, brother. You ain't getting me. Ten. Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from thine house. Books, eh? Because thou hast despised me and hast taken, thou, taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will raise up evil against thee out of thine own house, and I will take thy wives before thine eyes and, and give them unto thy neighbor, and he shall lie with, with thy wives in the sight of, the, of this son. Roof of the house. On the roof. Yes, yes, man. Hello, time out. Did I push it off? Was that me? I was supposed to say something, see? Y'all got the battery going zero. Right. So that was a lot of affliction. He was being reproved. 
did it in secret, but he reproved them openly. See? You need to go read about that. Finish that up to, to the uh, 14. Well, for thou did this in secretly. He did this in secretly. Go ahead. But I will do this thing before all Israel. The open rebuke is better than secret love. He going to reprove you openly because you did this thing secretly. Go ahead. And before the sun. Yep. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, the Lord also hath put away thy sin, thou shalt not die. And sometimes we get our sins put away. We don't die for our sins, but we got to suffer the consequences. Y'all got to understand that. Just because you're serving God and he letting you go easy, be glad he didn't kill you. And you didn't die in your sin to where you would have got a nice little ticket to the lake of fire. That's mercy. Yes, it is. Read. 14. How be it? Because by this deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. The child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. Now he's saying, and I'm going to do this because you know what? When you do something wrong and everybody been looking up to you to know the word of God and then deal with the word of God, when you do something that's idiotic, that's foolish, wicked, and that everybody know about, you give the people that don't believe in God an occasion to talk about the word of God. That's right. They bro. don't believe in God. And that's what people do. Hold on. This is supposed to be the preacher. Hold on. Hold on. I know he ain't did that. And you make people not trust and believe in God. He say, so, hey, man. He said, and that child that you ride, I mean, Beth, she's going to bet. I'm killing the child. But you know what the Lord did? He let the child be born. Even though the child died that evening, the child was born. So that child still got mercy because he was born. That means he's going to come back. So he didn't have no uh, premature, uh, 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 what do you call that? Uh, 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 huh? Miscarriage. Yeah, miscarriage. There you go. She didn't have that. The child was born. The child just didn't get to grow up and live. I mean, live out the days. Show mercy. Let the child become in existence. And he fixed that situation. She was still his wife. She, but if she was still a, his wife, he fixed it. But David had to deal with some stuff. Sometimes, hey, the Lord deal with us the same way. Because of his secret faults, I'm going to do this openly. You thought you was getting away with it in the secret. That's why a lot of people be thinking they're getting away with it. Ain't nobody see me do a murder. They don't have, they don't have no, no evidence. You goofy. Did you not know that the Lord got eyes running to and fro on the earth? That's the right. evidence, they don't need no evidence. He said a bird, a little bird will tell a matter. You forgot the bird was flying around you when you were doing it. Seven and they went and told on you. That's right. That's how the police got tipped off. And they said, do this, look here, look up under there. They look up, there you go. And gave them the evidence. You thought you was buying that burnout phone. You thought you was putting on different clothes. The birds and the whatever was flying or the mosquitoes or whatever, but the fowl, they was telling. And they told your secret. Proverbs 27. Proverbs 27. Why the Lord did it like that. Let me show you why the Lord did it like that. I keep trying to tell you, stop thinking you slick. Proverbs 27, pick it up at verse 5. Proverbs 27. This is one verse. Verse 5, this is why the Lord operate this way. Go ahead and read. Open rebuke is better than secret love. Why? Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. See? See? You got to understand this one thing. Open rebuke is better than secret love. When, things, when you rebuke openly, it gives me a chance to see what you did, so I won't do the same thing. I ain't doing that. I don't want that. That's why they put it on the news. 
That's why they always blast on the news what you did. What you did. In Israel, we, we, first of all, we're going to be the first to get put on blast. So don't do nothing. He said, because I'm going to punish you for all your sins. Yep. They will run you into the mud. I'm just telling you, he say, hey, open rebuke is better than secret love. They for all the wounds of a friend. You can, you can sustain wounds from a friend. But they're not there to harm you or to kill you. But the kisses of an enemy are deceitful because the enemy don't like you. They trying to take you clean out. Lord, he don't reprove you for no reason. We're going to get into that. There's reasons why. All right? And I always think it's always a bad thing that the Lord is reproving you or trying to correct you. Deuteronomy 8. Let's show the benefits of correction. Deuteronomy 8. Sometimes we don't like it, though. Oof. Rough. Deuteronomy 8 is rough. Pick it up at verse 5. I hope I ain't making nobody go to sleep. Is it hot in here? Romney 8, verse 5. When you get that, brother Chris, go ahead and read. Thou shalt also consider in thine heart uh -huh. that as a man chasteneth his son, so the Lord thy God chasteneth thee. Consider this in your heart. This is the Lord. Just he said, just as a man chasteneth his son, just like you chastise your own son or daughter. He said, that's the same way the Lord do us. He said, get this in your heart. Go ahead and read. Therefore thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways and to fear him. That's all. He's trying to put fear in you and so you can walk in the commandments of the Lord. That's it. Go ahead. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land, a land of brooks, of water, of fountains, and depths that spring out of valleys and hills. Go ahead. A land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates. A land of oil, olive, and honey. See, he's saying, I want to, what he's showing you is, I want to bring you into something that's a blessing. And at that time, all the earth is going to be the Lord's. Go ahead and read. A land wherein thou shalt. Eat bread without scarceness. You ain't got to worry about running out of a, a loaf of bread. Because the bread ain't going to be scarce like that. Go ahead. Thou shalt not lack any, you ain't gonna anything, lack anything in it. The land got everything you need and you ain't going to lack nothing. This is what I want to bring you into. This is why I correct you. Ears have not heard nor I have seen the good things the Lord got in store for him that love him. You don't even know. Your mind can't even imagine what God got in store. Now, you see how the Lord can fix up the world and create things that we got on the, in the world now. Imagine something that your mind can't even comprehend what he got for you. That's why he's trying to do all this correcting. Go ahead and read. A land whose stones are iron, and out of whose hills thou mayest dig brass. Yes, sir. When thou hast eaten the ark full. When you eating and you full, what's going to happen? Then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good for the good land which he hath given thee. Go ahead. Beware. Beware. That, that thou forget not the Lord thy God. Don't forget the Lord your God. Go ahead. In not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes which I command thee this day. You ever notice this one thing when you see crime out there or you turn on the news and somebody have did something bad, somebody broke a law, right? Somebody didn't, they forgot God and didn't keep his commandment. That's what it's all about. That's what life is about. Being civilized, showing you how to do right. Everything is by some type of order. Everything. You don't understand that? That's what's constantly being drilled in us every single day. Even if you're not in the word of God, it's drilled into you in life. That's right. 